Uh, sir, actually, father is also joining in, so I'm currently admitting him right away. So, Jain, can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. Clearly. Methods are already live. Live streaming has already started. Yes, sir. Yeah. Even our uh, voice is heard. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Now, Heman, sir, over to you. Uh, sir, am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Carry on. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, one and all. On behalf of college management, staff, I, Dr. Himan Khanulkar, welcome all the students and their parents to this online webinar. We are thankful to you for all showing your interest in studying at Father Concisa Rodriguez College of Engineering. And as you are set to take the most important decisions regarding your career, I'm sure this webinar will create awareness in your mind about the various streams, academic environment, placement at our college, and also the processes related to the first year engineering admission. To do this, we have Principal Dr. Surendra Singh Rathod, our HODs, Registrar, and entire admission team today. Our Principal Dr. Surendra Singh Rathod will now be interacting with you through this session. Participants, if you have any queries, please put it up in the chat box and admission team will be answering them as the session is in progress. Over to you, sir. Yeah, good, good evening, everyone. And uh, I hope I am very clear to everybody. My voice and everything is clear. Uh, so, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, I can see an echo, echo in my voice. Uh, is it because somebody has turned on the YouTube channel or something like that? Uh, just check it out. Because I'm having an echo. Okay, let me go ahead. So, uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, once again, warm welcome to all of you. And I welcome everyone who has joined this meeting. Uh, we have with us uh, Father Valerian D'Souza. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening to, to all the head of the departments. Uh, good evening, all the teachers, continuing staff, all the candidates, uh, their uh, parents, and everyone who ever has joined this meeting. Uh, first of all, I congratulate all the candidates to pass CET JW examination with the flying colors. We know that 12 standard students are uh, sitting at the crossroads of the admissions, uh, making one of the important decisions of their life. This year, we thought of giving an information through two webinars to you. Uh, rather than you coming to the college and uh, traveling all the way just to get an answer to so a few questions, we thought of why not college can come to you and give this basic information. Then rather than you coming to the college for asking questions like what are the college timings, how the admission process is, etc., etc., uh, we have scheduled these two webinars. Every year at Father CRC, we receive many inquiries uh, related to the admission process, in particular related to different streams of engineering offered by the college, uh, about the academics at the college etc etc so this first webinar is about uh, the information related to the college itself initially i will talk about the engineering per se and then uh, at the end details about the entire admission process in general as well as the admission process that we will carry out at the father agnan institute while taking the decision of selecting a college uh, generally we consider factors like what are the streams offered by the college how much is the fees of the college? Where the college is located? How is the infrastructure? And uh, how are the faculty members, et cetera, et cetera. The most important point I must tell you at this point of time is that 
uh, you should see the academics of the college how the academics are being run at the college rather than simply looking at the infrastructures or timing related things academics should assume the prime spot while making the decision of selecting a college or decision of selecting a branch in the college so let me take you uh, through the journey of father consecure rodriguez college of engineering and engineering in general first so our college was established in a, not a college as such an agricultural technical complex is established in 1957 it was uh, inaugurated by shrimati indira gandhi ji uh, our college uh, has got a, a very bright uh, focus and uh, the concept was given by our late reverend father consecure rodriguez uh, his thought was that my country my people and that's what will matters and therefore we have set up a vision of molding engineers uh, to build the nation as such as a agnel technical complex uh, we are completely devoted towards technical education uh, we have the institute at bandra we have another institute at washi uh, verena which is at goa then new delhi noida pune ambarnath and thane we have technical complexes uh, primarily in all these complexes what we impart is the skill based training Uh, technician based training and at some places engineering like washi bandra and uh, goa campuses at all technical complexes uh, we have the core values which are primarily discipline specific originality quality competitive spirit social sensitivity and integrity so we try to follow all these uh, qualities and we try to imbibe all these qualities in our students we believe that the student when enters inside the campus is disciplined and uh, have a competitive spirit in the world and at the same time is socially sensitive now let me first uh, talk about little bit about an engineering because uh, from last 2 3 days when i am talking to the candidates they are really really confused uh, whether to opt for engineering which engineering branches etc etc so let me spend 5 uh, 10 minutes on this so an engineer is primarily a person who uses scientific knowledge to solve the critical problems of real life engineers create new things and make old things better to serve the society innovative and imaginative solutions for tomorrow's problems are being given by the engineers as a human being engineering is in our dna someone who first time created fire or pots made of a claw or for that matter a wheel no one called them engineers but in today's terminology they are actually engineers as a human race we have come all the way from the stone age to the age of smart cities today everybody is talking about smart city even government of india is talking about creating smart cities smart cities requires all types of solutions it would be a smart home smart agriculture smart governance smart healthcare system etc etc in fact smart mobility as well your cars will be electric in the near future and will be autonomous also all such solutions require creative engineers and down the lane you are going to provide such kind of engineers if you become the uh, if you take an admission in an engineering college people will be looking towards you to provide this such kind of smart cities so engineering is primarily a field that requires dedication and focus if you enjoy mathematics and science i believe that this is a great field to pursue it is a challenging but also exciting and have highly satisfying career so it is always good to make a career in a diverse field a field which gives you many many options a field which does not closes your doors rather it opens the new doors it opens new opportunities it opens new avenues for you engineering is such an option engineering is a diverse creative and challenging field once you decide to catch a flight of engineering then the immediate question comes to your mind is that which branch of engineering that is i should be taking which stream in an engineering right so primarily there are four streams mechanical engineering civil engineering electrical engineering and chemical engineering worldwide if you see these are the primarily four engineering branches that are existing all other streams that we are talking nowadays are subset of these streams for example electronics engineering computer or telecommunications these are all evolved from called as an electrical engineering 
nowadays these boundaries are completely blurred so for example iit bombay may be offering you an electrical engineering program there is no separate electronics engineering so electronics engineering is a subset of electrical engineering right so everything is nowadays has become interdisciplinary it has become a multidisciplinary so it is your choice to take which branch remember that society requires all kinds of engineers if you read today's times of india article uh, professor ram gopal rao who is an ex director of iit delhi and ex professor at iit bombay he has clearly mentioned that is a mad rush going towards only computer engineering because society needs all kinds of engineers if we need computers we also need the smart devices right we also need the bridges we also need the good roads we also need the dams you can take admission in any any branch however one can be successful in that stream if you if you put your 100% efforts while pursuing studies in that stream therefore my suggestion is today's today's devices are multidisciplinary everything is required if you design a smartphone if you want to design a smart city you require all kinds of engineers so your choice is you are liking that's it nothing more than that now let us talk about what engineers do people have a perception that engineers are very serious people right or the persons who are simply sitting at a electrical engineering kind mscb office uh, if you go back to 20 20 30 years back only the person should, sitting at an mscb office people used to call them as an engineer or a person who is building the dams and the bridges they used to call them as an engineer but that is not the case today let me tell you engineers are everywhere nowadays just see these pictures and find out what is common among all of them right they are all from the diverse field some of them are scientists some of them are novelists politician actors sportsmen etc and there may be numerous examples like this engineers are not only sending rockets in the space but they are also designing the best defense systems and securing our borders of the country right in fact during covid 19 engineers were designing the ventilators for you right they were installing oxygen cylinders for you they were helping the medical professionals the apps that you got on which you have registered for your vaccination program that was also designed by an engineer engineers are not only designing the best healthcare systems but they are also designing the hardware softwares uh, they are designing the entertainment systems everywhere engineers are present so if they are designing smart vehicles they are also designing the smartphones right your bridges roads metros so engineers have reached to the highest positions in the country you can identify the picture of dr apj abdul kalam in this so today's most of the ceos including politicians are engineers so engineers can virtually do anything or i would say that they can be found in any profession these are few examples in it simply means that whatever is your hobby whatever you want to pursue seriously if you if you do your studies very well you can definitely pursue so engineering is something which which give broadens your scope now let me talk directly about what are the career opportunities that are present after engineering there are two ways if you are interested in technical it's good so when you study let us say after 2 years or 3 years you find out that okay technical is not good for you you can also go for the non technical jobs right so if you want to remain in a technical field there are two options for you one is you can directly pursue a job or you can go for higher studies you can go for mbas ms mtech those kind of programs if you want to join the non technical domains then also you have two options you can go for the job or you can go for the post graduation that is higher studies so both technical and non technical opportunities are available for you after doing an engineering let me broaden this horizon and explain to the candidates that how how your career you can shape after uh, going for a btech or a be so let us let us say you directly want a job then you will go for the placement so see how the placements of the colleges are various colleges i will talk about the placement at the father consecure rodriguez college of engineering also after few slides then after placement you will directly go in an industry and you will you will do a job right 
let us say you want to pursue higher studies then you will go for mtech or me after mtech me also you can go for a job or you can uh, pursue a career in the research field for example you can go on doing your phd if you want to do an ms then you will have to go abroad so for that purpose do a b then take letter of recommendation from the college then go for join an ms program maybe at some foreign university and after that also you can do a job or you can pursue a phd and make your career in the research domain let us say you want to do an mba so there are people who will say that after engineering only mba is there no mba can be done after many uh, other branches as well but if you study general scenario the successful mbas are generally from an engineering branch so if you want to do a corporate job uh, obviously uh, you will go for an mba and it is possible to do that after engineering let us say you are inclined towards the government sector and you want to do uh, you want to become an ias officer or you want to become an ips officer or you want to become an uh, ifs officer you want to go for a finance service foreign service or you want to go for directly for a collectorate kind of a service or police service it is possible you can do your mpsc or upsc after engineering degree and you can become a bureaucrat let us say somebody says that i don't want to go any of these options and i have my family business or i want to start up my own because i have an idea and i would like to become an entrepreneur so very very great thing i would welcome all such candidates who would like to become a job creator rather than simply a job seeker so you can become an entrepreneur as well after engineering somebody says that no i would like to pursue directly law sports or music i want to become a patent lawyer let us say or i want to uh, simply pursue the law or i would like to become some a music composer i i would like to excel in the sports yes that is also possible but in this case you will have to do an engineering and then probably you will go for a short term uh, kind of a diploma course or certificate course or maybe a post graduate course or maybe a full fledged degree so all all these options are available for you and that's that's the best part of an engineering probably engineering is the only field uh, which will which will make you eligible for all these options and that's the great thing Uh, let me now briefly tell you about directly about if you want to pursue technical things where you can land up after engineering you can go in a software industry you can go in an hardware industry if at all you are interested towards hardware side you can do a space research all space scientists they are engineers right you can go join the department of telecommunication kind of things you can go for telecom sector uh, you can join the design industries like for example apple cadence synopsis uh, qualcomm or you can go for western digital or microsoft those kind of industries uh, you can uh, go into the automotive sector right nowadays we are talking about e electrical vehicles so you can join automotive sector you can join all energy and utility sectors you can go towards aeronautical side uh, uh, it's it's a myth that only aeronautical engineer can do the uh, uh, can go into the aeronautical sector it's not like that if you see and if you visit any uh, let us say Uh, airport you will find so many engineers over there so many maintenance engineers over there they require engineers for all branches including artificial intelligence data science electronics engineering mechanical engineering everybody is required over there so you can do technical job in all such uh, industries if you are interested in non technical fields so there are law firms available you can go for tech law even banking sector requires the engineers uh, in their in the, uh, for verification of so many things you can go for technology management you can go for uh, banking and financial tech sector fintech you can go for indian post lic rbi you can join the tourism sector forensic sector nowadays cyber security has become a very important uh, aspect and we have in fact started the uh, one of the course in at father uh, consigur rodriguez college of engineering called as cyber security uh, which you can opt for and you can go to the forensic labs you can join the automation and security systems so all this non tech jobs are also available in government sector you can do a ies you can give a competitive examination like ies indian engineering services and then you become eligible for so many career opportunities in the government sector you can give upsc you can give mpsc or you can go on short service commission and you can join the defense services uh, you can go for an isro you can go for drdo you can go for brc if you are interested in the research domain so just say what is the list is an unending list Indian Railways, Bharat Heavy, uh, Heavy Electricals Limited, Bharat Electronics Limited, NTPC, IOCL, BPCL—all these career options are available for you. 
now uh, i have included this particular slide just to explain you this mad rush towards the computer engineering branch as i told you up till now uh, that uh, that our society requires all kinds of engineers and see what our government is doing right this year itself few months ago government central government has announced lot of funds how much 76000 crores of funds just for the development of semiconductor and the display manufacturing sector so slowly it is going to open this sector is going to open so you can opt for a branch like electronics engineering electronics and computer science etc wherein you will learn you can learn about the courses like semiconductors vlsi etc and you can take the benefits of such kind of government schemes uh just one day ago gadkari ji our uh, central minister has announced that uh, automobile electrical sector is going to take a boost in our country and uh, obviously because we are looking towards the electrical vehicles so electrical vehicles is one of the core subject uh, not only in electronics but your mechanical engineering branch uh, probably next year we will be starting with the electrical vehicles vlsi design kinds of honors program as well so i request all of you all the prospecting candidates that don't look only towards computer science as one of the one of your option but do give a justice towards your core engineering branches also and in our country in the near future you will find electrical vehicles semiconductor manufacturing uh, fields etc etc industries etc so this is also a good option for all of you any any industry or any sector when when it uh, runs a placement cycle or when it find it wants to find out a good uh, candidate what they do is they they identify the skill set and this slide i have included just to tell you that there are three kinds of skill sets that are generally candidate need to acquire one is a campus skill another is a global skill sets and third one is an industry skill set so make a judicious decision an important decision select a college which is going to give you all these three, three skill sets you need to acquire the skill sets at a campus to benchmark yourself into the core engineering skills a college which imparts core engineering knowledge it is very very important however at the global level if you see there are skill sets like for example decision making negotiation right or teamwork or management see a college which has lot of activities which inculcates such kind of skill sets and go for that college third one is an important find out the industry relationships of the college a college which has mous with the industry or where student participate in the industry competitions obviously or they are having an internship programs they will be much better positions right so your decisions simply should not be based on the uh, basic branches but you think about which is a college giving the campus skills which is a college giving the global skills and which is a college connecting to you to an industry right so this is about an engineering in general i spoke about what engineering is and what is the scope now let me come back to our college that is father consecure rotary college of engineering and tell me about uh, this college so i will talk only about an undergraduate program because this web webinar is about it it is a four years program divided into eight semesters two semesters in a year you will have to earn around 170 to 180 credits to get an engineering degree we are affiliated now we call it as a permanent affiliation we are permanently affiliated to the university of mumbai if you take an admission at father consecure rotary college of engineering uh, we are also having honors and minor degree programs now for example somebody uh, taking mechanical engineering as a core branch may also opt for is an optional may also opt for an honors in a data science so your degree from university of mumbai will be be in mechanical engineering with honors in data science right this is a very good option identify which are the colleges particularly in mumbai university giving you such kind of an option and you will definitely opt for a college like father consecure rotary college of engineering which is one of the first college to offer such kind of uh, degrees with the honors program like mechanical engineering with the honors in data science so just to give you the brief about uh, more about the institution it's a minority institution affiliated to the university of mumbai approved by iict we as present we are having four programs mechanical engineering electronics and computer science computer engineering artificial intelligence and data science 
So as such, mechanical engineering program, even though it looks at the college as a new program because it was started in 2019, but in reality, it is not a new program. Earlier, Father Agnell College was known for production engineering and it started in 1984. So our production engineering, which was well known in the country, is having a long history. And that production engineering program, recently in 2019, we have converted into mechanical engineering program. We also had an electronics engineering, very old program from 19, uh, 1987. So ours is the first college which has converted this electronics engineering to electronics and computer science program in 2019. So now our first batch of ECS is in final year. And this, this change in name has been has come just because of uh, this rush that people have found out that there are good things in the electronics there are good things in the computer why not to why not to get the good things from both the branches and have a new branch electronics and computer science so father agnes is the first college in mumbai university to think about it and we started it in 2019 then obviously we have a computer engineering program uh, which also started in 1991 with the intake of 60 but now in 2020, the intake has been increased and now the intake is 120. And the new program, completely new program was started in 2020 with the 60 intake that is artificial intelligence and data science. And now their first batch is in third year. As a college, we also have the post graduation in mechanical engineering in CAD CAM and robotics. And we also have the research program that is PhD programs in electronics engineering and mechanical engineering. So in short, uh, if you are applying now, so what are the streams available to you? So for an undergraduate four-year program, there's a computer engineering with an intake of 120. There's an AIDS with an intake of 60. There is an ECS branch with an intake of 60. And there's a mechanical engineering with an intake of 60. So as I told you right now, the unique feature of this college for your badge is this one, which is shown on the slide. It is about the honors or the minor degree programs. You all are eligible, whether you take an admission in mechanical, AIDS, electronics and computer science, or computer engineering, you can opt either honors or minor degree program in IoT, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence and data science, machine learning, blockchain, cybersecurity, robotics, 3D printing. So in short, if I want to tell you that somebody from a mechanical engineering and wants to learn like sensor technologies, what are the different sensors that are used in IOTs? Uh, what are the how to design a system, IoT based system, right? Or how, what is an industry, how industry is using the IOTs? You can definitely do that, even if you take animation in mechanical engineering, right? Then we have an artificial intelligence and machine learning. This particular honors program is about the mathematics, use of mathematics for designing the algorithms for predictive algorithms etc etc if you want to study the game theory you can definitely offer ai and machine learning program so we teach ai ml for the healthcare textual analytics web analytics social media analytics so all these kind of things are covered in ai and ml and you may take admission in any branch of engineering it doesn't matter you can definitely study all these programs and in fact on your degree it will be written that be in so and so core engineering with honors or minus degree in one of these data science right if you want to study data science mathematics and statistics is must so if you are good in mathematics and statistics you should opt for data science because nowadays data analytics is very very important if you, if you see an aeroplane there are so many sensors on the aeroplane and on fly you need to take a decision so who who takes that decision data scientists take that decision right so all these kind of things we do teach in the data science. Then blockchain. Uh, you might be aware that there are uh, cryptocurrencies kind of things very popular now. And the near future, probably cryptocurrency might be legalized in the country and everybody starts using the cryptocurrencies. So the knowledge about the various platforms of development of blockchain, maybe an Ethereum platform or any other platform. If you want to study about the Bitcoins, if you want to study about the Ethereums, right? If you want to develop the uh, blockchain platforms, if you want to study about the decentralized finance, if you want to study about the uh, smart contracts, blockchain is an available thing for you. You take admission in any branch, doesn't matter. You can study all of these things. 
let us say any of you is interested in the cyber security you want to study digital forensics you want to study ethical hacking right you want to uh, study the application of different security softwares then cyber security is the domain which we offer somebody may be interested in robotics i need not talk much about robotics because hollywood and bollywood movies have already conceptualized this very much right however in an engineering we talk about the industrial robotics we talk about something called as mechatronics which is which is a marriage between the mechanical engineering and electronics engineering right in robotics also we do a lot of uh, artificial intelligence and data science all those things are possible autonomous vehicles they also require the robotic concepts automation all those require robotics concepts so you can study in fact at father agnel college we have got a very good robotics laboratory 3d printing if you want to if you have a good visualizer if you want to visualize something let us say model of a building model of a car you want to study that then you can take an admission in the honors program like 3d printing right so all these honors programs are possible now this slide will show you that see if you take admission in for example computer engineering you can go for honors degree program in iot ai ml data science blockchain cyber security all these things are possible if you take a admission in mechanical engineering you can go for honors program in robotics 3d printing data science or minus pro minor degree program in ai ml blockchain cyber security all these things are feasible you can you can do it right so let me let me just give you the glimpse of how the college looks like Uh, because uh, i i would like to invite you all to the college come to college and see the facilities that are being offered by the college if you are not able to see uh, just see two minutes how the college looks like we have a common facilities like there is a library there is a auditorium there is a gymnasium there is a common computer center uh, there is a workshop which is primarily used for, by the mechanical engineering students and as well as uh, first year engineering and uh, then there is a common uh, bwe kind of lab basic electrical engineering you can study then there is a physics chemistry lab there is a language laboratory wherein you can have the group discussions group meetings you can conduct uh, uh, like spoken tutorials all these kind of things you can study these are all common see how your classroom looks like uh, this is just a picture to show you that this is the classroom at uh, father agnel college right and we are now converting slowly these classrooms to the smart classrooms if you want to visit a department you can definitely you are most welcome to visit any of the department uh, these are all the departmental level facilities all the departments are well equipped with uh, laboratories uh, these are all the department level facilities you can see all these labs whether it's a computer engineering mechanical engineering aids or ecs all labs are well equipped uh, we do encourage industrial visits so industrial visits are not only organized by the for the students but they are also organized for the teachers so that they are upgraded with their no industrial knowledge and then they impart the same knowledge uh, to the students so regular industrial visits are being organized uh, by the college we have a very good uh, industrial setups this is a unique thing one more important thing about the college we have so many clubs uh, i i i if i go on listing about the clubs and their achievements probably 2 3 hours are also not enough we have all kinds of uh, clubs like tedx then uh, asme sme csi ieee there are so many so many clubs so what is the purpose of this clubs purpose of this club is the holistic development right something which cannot be imparted in the four walls of the classroom and you would like to learn that then uh, you need such kind of clubs so these clubs are existing just to give you the glimpses of such kind of clubs uh, i will glance through few of the slides we have a team abada Uh, which designs such kind of uh, vehicles, and uh, they have brought Lawrence Lawrence to the college till date. Uh, they participate in all kinds of international international competitions, and uh, if you take an admission in any branch, like for example, even if you go for mechanical engineering, you will be part of uh, such kind of teams. Then we have a very good team called as a uh, Formula Racing team, and they also they also participate in all kinds of international events. i request you all to visit uh, the website and there will be some tabs student clubs etc and you will find all kinds of clubs over there then you may be aware of uh, the competition which is a robocon competition very popular competition at national as well as international level generally it is live telecast on uh, dd dd channel and our students every year are participating in the robocon competition and they are getting uh, they are always in the top 10 sometimes in the top 1 or top 5 top 1 or top 5 or top 
every year students are participating in this competition and then there is a very good team that's called as a team vayu shastra just see if you are in, if you are inclined and if you if you think you would like to design the aeroplanes models flying aeroplanes you would like to test them you want to uh, design the drones right you will be able to do that uh, you may take admission in any branch these are all teams comprising of the students from different branches this team vayu shastra participates in very renowned competitions they design their planes they take those planes the outside uh, the country also and then they demonstrate and these are all the models which are shown every year they have designed different different kinds of aeroplanes uh, for participating in the international competitions many times they have won the first prize in those competitions worldwide and in fact uh, let me brief you that nowadays we are uh, we are tying up with uh, society, society of uh, aeronautical uh, or aeronautical society and uh, uh, probably we will this team will zoom with the help of those engineers we always uh, believe in the social contribution we have an nss kind of uh, club which participates in social activities right uh, there are many other clubs and uh, we conduct the programs like debate competitions there is a very uh, famous competition they are called as a crmd there is a cultural program called as euphoria sports competition so we uh, these are all the photographs of our students uh, participating in different competitions they book different stadiums so that you get the uh, flavor and uh, flavor of participating in those kind of stadiums right these are simply the photographs showing you that how the students are participating and bringing the laurels like uh, this right hand side bottom photograph is from the smart india hackathon uh, uh, recently our students participated in the smart india hackathon smart india hackathon is a competition which is launched by the government of india and across the engineering colleges student participate and the competition is organized at various places so this year at one of the problem statement our students were the first winner in the smart india competition high smart india hackathon competition which was organized at the chandigarh so this this was about the glimpses of the college now let me come to the core thing like scholarships there is a question generally being asked by many of the students who come for the counseling and they ask uh, what are the scholarships sir can you explain so let me tell you we have a very good scholarship programs uh, there are government given scholarships like government of india gives scholarship for the category students sc st obc vjnt sbc you can you can opt for all those scholarships after taking the admissions you will definitely be eligible for those scholarships there is a ebc scholarship uh, given by the directorate of technical education for the students who are economically uh, not so strong then there is a minority scholarship as well and uh, there are many scholarships which are being launched frequently by the aict like the snapshot shown saksham etc uh, these are all launched by the aict and we do encourage our students motivate our students uh, to take the benefit of this aict launch scholarships these are all government scholarships apart from them college always makes an effort to uh, to take you the benefits of non government scholarship like blue star foundation uh, gives the scholarships to the students uh, every year recently also they have come last week they have come to the college and uh, uh, they have shortlisted the students then there is a narottam saksaria foundation scholarship there is a jsw scholarship ratan tata foundation scholarship then there is a stool uh, foundation scholarship which has been launched by our alumni itself and there is an idfc first bank scholarship so you can see that along with government there are non government scholarships number of scholarships available now let us say there is a girl student and uh, wants a separate scholarship for uh, for them so for women empowerment also we have many scholarships there is a scholarship called as a nimaya xbsl scheme it is specially for the girl student uh, you might be aware that uh, the uh, shweta bachchan runs a uh, runs this kind of scheme and uh, this is her scheme which has been adopted uh, by the college and every year girl students are selected by the uh, nimaya under this scheme then for women empowerment or the girl empowerment for soft skills training internships and also the financial assistance there is a scholarship called as catalyst along with this british council also gives the scholarships for women uh, particularly in the steam domain 
so a lot of scholarships are available however it is up to you uh, to take the benefit of these scholarships some of the scholarships you may be eligible based on your maybe your category financial background or gender or merit based scholarship there are many merit based scholarships like blue star blue star foundation narottam etc they are all these are all merit based scholarships now let me briefly talk about something else like uh, placements internships entrepreneurship etc at father agnel college of engineering there are many companies which regularly visit our college uh, we categorize them into different categories like there are allied companies there are super dream companies there are dream companies uh, there are general uh, uh, called them as a bulk recruiters all these companies do visit the college and they do recruit the college every year so like just to give you the statistics briefly uh, if i say about the year wise if you go from the past few years till let us say last year's placement 21 22 so last year the highest ctc offered it was by the amazon to our students it was 35 lakhs per annum average ctc of the college in 21 22 it was 6.8 lpa and the lowest ctc was around 3.10 lpa and uh, if you see the number of offers there are significant offers are being given to the students some of the students get multiple offers and it is a choice for them to select which one they wants to join right so if you see the 20 to 23 that means this academic year so the final year students the students who are in final year as of now so already 63% students are placed and still placement is going on number of offers that are been given out as of now are 127 offers and highest ctc as of now offered is around 18 lakhs that means our final year students the student who is in final year right now is getting 18 lakhs as an highest ctc and an uh, average if you want to know it is around 6.4 ctc being offered so number of offers and the also the average ctc every year is going on increasing and we believe that in the coming years with uh, Uh, the honors program etc being started this year itself uh, this is going to increase so if i if i want to compare with the previous companies a uh, previous averages number of companies ctc etc etc on an average basis so this year also uh, we are almost reaching averages but however only one month over two months of the placement cycle has over and still many many more companies are remaining to visit to the college Uh, this right hand side graph shows you that even though there was a pandemic in 2020 uh, 2021 but still uh, we were hardly affected by the number of placements hardly 2 3% you can see was affected and now it has been again picked up and we believe that it is going to pick up in the future as well our teachers our placement officer an entire placement cell takes care that students are being ready for the placement and they do arrange frequent trainings for example there is a pentagon space every year we arrange training from them for the final year students under their csr program uh, so that our students are ready for the placement however as a principal uh, my suggestion to you is that even if you take if you if you see these uh, statistics of the placement it looks very good no doubt exciting statistics however Uh, it's not that you take an admission as father agnel college or any college for that matter and you will land up in a fantastic company what determines is your attitude right and not your aptitude which will take you to the desired altitude so how you pursue your career in four year of engineering it matters it does matter whatever is your branch you can take an admission in computer or maybe in mechanical engineering or electronics and computer science finally how do you study how do you take part in all these programs that i have shown that matters right and let me also talk about the higher studies some of you may be interested that okay sir i am not interested in placement so why do i look at the placement statistics i want to pursue my research or i want to go for ms program or mtech program most welcome i would love such kind of students that rather than directly going for placement they would they further want to study so i call them as a lifelong learners so you can go for mtech you can go for ms you can go for mba and our statistics shows that around 20 to 25% students from our college goes for the higher studies and at an excellent universities worldwide some of them lands at the national level at the iits maybe iit kanpur madras bombay patna right all these universities or worldwide renowned universities 
and we will definitely help you out if you want to go for higher studies nowadays people are also talking about internships right what is the purpose of internship purpose of internship is to give you the real life experience you should work on real life projects you should work in an industry obviously it is going to make you industry ready so it will build your confidence it will make your cv better so yes we believe in this and we do take care uh, that you get some kind of an internship internships are being offered from maybe second year onwards to the final year but generally internships when we talk about we talk about the final years final year engineering so if if i say that uh, the 2022 batch which is passed out right now so how many students have done internships they do get stipend as well right many of them get fantastic stipend from an industries some of them may get an internship in maybe a jp morgan or such kind of companies so last year around 87 students from circuit branches got an internship production engineering which uh, has been closed now but now we have a mechanical engineering which is going to final year so all batch entire batch of 65 students got an internship right so in general if i see second year third year students final year students only from computer engineering almost 117 students got an internship right so all branches are getting an internship so internship is 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 okay if you join the college definitely uh, you can get an internship now let me talk about the entrepreneurship culture right so you may have been hearing many many things in the world so new idea innovative idea what what's an innovation people may be talking about invention or they may be talking about patent copyright called research publication technology in general and entrepreneurship right what do they mean so we do teach the students all these concepts we have a very very vibrant innovation uh, institutions innovation council we call it as an iic at father uh, consigor rodriguez college of engineering we have an isel so if any one of you wants to be a job giver rather than a job seeker and you feel that okay i will do an engineering and then i will start my business i have a fantastic idea i can get a patent for that i want to do an incubation right i want to do an innovation in that domain you are most most welcome and and this is where our uh, all education institute should be i personally believe that all the education institute should start the startup culture in their colleges and definitely father agnel is pursuing this and we have already started with the issl so why do why do you join what why do we stand out so few things alumni from our college are holding prestigious positions at various international companies you may name them it is an intel it may be a tesla google yahoo facebook amazon amd etc you will find a student or an alumni passed out from this college and holding a prestigious position we are having mous with reputed organizations and the esteemed recruiters so that you get a learning experience good learning experience and an industry exposure we have a very good alumni connect and they are many a times they are the mentors to you there are internships just now i spoke there are internship guided internships to accelerate your career growth we have an institute innovation cell to encourage you to become the job creators and there are many associations like we are having a uh, we are starting now with the aeronautical society of india association fsi association crypto university lpi ieee csi there are so many associations and i welcome you to be a part of these associations so in general if you ask any anybody and they will say okay any college will talk about the placements internships and all these things but what about the quality of education so definitely we need to ask third party about the quality of education right so college uh, has been accredited by many agencies like uh, father agnel college already accredited by the nac we, our programs whichever are eligible are accredited by the nba so for nba accreditation your final year graduate graduate should come out so therefore now mechanical and aids they are still in the final year uh, third year and final year respect uh, make final year and third year respectively so obviously uh, they have not gone from the and be accreditation but production engineering already accredited program electronics engineering already accredited program computer engineering already accredited program so all these are nba accredited programs uh, in nrf also in the past our institute uh, has appeared in the ranking and uh, we hope that in future also it is going to come then times of india ranking we are having 
uh, at a national level 47th ranking received then career 360 we are having a 3 plus star received then our iic cell received the maximum score that is of four star rating so these are the this indicates that uh, college is imparting the quality education we have been ranked by most of the agencies which are doing the ranking at the national level other highlights uh, as far as academic performance is concerned all the departments all programs are having 100% results so i need not talk about the percentage this and that because 100% results are there our all the faculty members are qualified faculty members they are doing research in their domain like for example last year 76 uh, research publications have been pub uh, appeared only in the last year then there are many faculty members who are pursuing phd few of them are already phd and those who are not they are pursuing phd and in, within the few years everybody every single faculty in the college is going to have the phd faculty they are also publishing the patents there are good support systems available in the college there are mentors allocated in the college there is a professional counselor available in the college if you want the library facilities like uh, british council or iit bombay library you want to use let us say you want to go to iit bombay and you want to explore their library facilities so we are we are having already a tie up uh, with the iit bombay to utilize their library facilities uh, as far as infrastructure is considered all the icit requirements are fulfilled and over and above that we are having an additional infrastructure so these are few of the major things now this is about the last slide about the college and then i will directly talk about the actual admission process so i spoke you what is available as of now and in the next 5 years what we will be or during your graduation of 4 years what we will be and we want to be we would like to go ahead as early as possible towards the academic autonomy and the first step towards that is a permanent affiliation which recently we have already got so probably in the next uh, one or two years definitely we are going to become an autonomous then we would like to have a strong research culture we already have research centers in electronics engineering mechanical engineering and probably in few months maybe 3 4 months or maybe up to january we are also going to start research center in the computer engineering branch and i already told you that many faculty are already pursuing the phd so we would like to have a strong research organization father agnes should be called as a research organization in future then ecosystem startup ecosystem entrepreneurial ecosystem we have taken the few steps towards that for the development like iic which has been four star already rated we are having it we are having an ecel and in future we believe that we are going to have a incubation center as well uh, so that's an another uh, next step and you may be aware that uh, government of india has started the nas uh, national education policy and we want to we believe in that policy and we would like to implement policy with its complete intent and the one of the step towards that is the honors and the minor degree program across different disciplines and if we talks about the interdisciplinary knowledge cross disciplinary knowledge and we have adopted it and probably uh, if government of india comes up with the new implementations of nep we will also adopt those things so in in new things or if you take an admission now and if you see the four years of coming probably you will visit you will see the academic autonomy strong research culture maybe startup culture and the nep nep implementation in the college right so what i spoke about up till now is about is about the college details of the college now let me directly come to the first year engineering admission process so if you are talking about admission just clear up just make sure that you are aware of three terminologies one is called as admission reporting center it is called as an arc it means it is a center where the candidates are report for confirmation of the admission by the verification for verification of documents and the payment of fees then there is called as an fc which is a uh, facilitation center it means it is a center where you are going to verify your documents and there is something called as a cap seats you should know what is the meaning of cap seats these are the seats which are being filled through the centralized process so cap seats are not filled through the colleges they are filled through the centralized process and the competent authority means your seat is cell is going to invite online applications for the cap seats most important line you should remember that registration for the cap is compulsory it is prerequisite and mandatory to apply for the verification of documents to the competent authority to become the eligible for the admission okay 
so how do you how do you enroll online for the cap go to the ct cell portal and register over there start the new registration it will ask you few details and go on filling those details so you will get an application id or user id maintain that application id just an example shown over here and note down your password also carefully and keep it at the same place remember that verification of this application form you are doing an online is must number 1 it is mandatory to apply and second verification is also must so only verified application forms will be considered for the cap admission process okay and where do you do the verification once you apply then you will have to visit the nearest apsi center the list of apsi center is also given on the same ct cell website you can see the college which is an apsi center go there show your original documents and get verified your application form this is an important step okay so i'm repeating fill the application on ct cell for the cap round okay this is must and get your ver documents verified at the fc center okay now let me talk briefly about the candidature type so if you are applying at the father agnel college your institute code is going to be en3184 3184 is going to be your institute code your candidature type may be you may be maharashtra state candidature then you are you will be called as type a to type e i will speak briefly about what is type a type e etc then you may be an all india candidature you may be a minority candidature you may be an nri foreign student or oci or pi candidature jammu and kashmir and ladakh migrant candidature at father agnel college nri and foreign student or oci or pi candidature is not applicable there is no nri quota at father agnel college so if you want to apply to this college you may be a maharashtra state candidature all india candidature minority or jnk candidature any one of these so let me briefly talk about who is going to be a maharashtra state candidate okay so maharashtra state candidate is a candidate obviously who is an indian national who has passed out hsc examination with physics and mathematics as a compulsory subject and other subject may be chemistry biotechnology biology or any technical vocational subject you need 45% of the minimum marks in hsc examination or at least 40% marks if you are from a backward categories economic or weaker section or person with disability etc but if you are claiming the category then remember that category should be recognized only in the maharashtra state also the candidate should have appeared in all the subjects in mscet 2022 examination and you should have non zero score in this examination then you become the eligible so briefly you should be an indian national you should have hsc with physics mathematics and compulsory or uh, chemistry or other subjects and definitely you should have appeared in mscet examination and you should have a non zero score if you have done the diploma then also you are eligible so i will not talk about that you can read it later now who is called as an all india candidate a candidate obviously who is an indian national pass hsc examination but here the difference is that uh, you can give mst ct but you should also have the jwe examination okay so jwe mains examination score is required so if you are applying to all india candidate then you then your jwe main score will be asked and this score should be non zero positive score okay so you require a jwe mains non zero positive score to apply for all india candidature now what are what are type a type b type c type b and type e so type a candidate is a candidate obviously from the maharashtra state born in maharashtra or domiciled of maharashtra and pass ssc and hsc examination from maharashtra then who is type b let us say the candidate who is not in type a is a type b candidate so that means a candidate who does not fall in type a above but who or whose father or mother is domiciled in the state of maharashtra and possessing a domicile certificate okay that means e if your father is domiciled in maharashtra then also you then you apply for the type b candidate 
okay who is type c candidate a candidate obviously who is not in type a and type b then they are in type c candidate so type c candidates are particularly for the employees of government of india or government of india undertaking and those who have been posted in state of maharashtra till the date of application okay so the government of india employee posted in the state of maharashtra those candidates are called as type c candidates now who are type d candidates so type d candidates obviously not in type a type b and type c so in this case these are the candidates whose father or mother is an employee or retired employee from the government of maharashtra or government of maharashtra undertaking and who is type e candidate obviously who is not in an above but they fall they are located at the border areas of maharashtra and karnataka but they are residing in the maharashtra karnataka border area itself and having a mother tongue marathi they are type e candidate okay so you may be type a candidate type b candidate type c candidate type d candidate or type e candidate now obviously next next question comes what are the important documents required i believe you can take a snapshot of the screen and you can keep or you can visit our website and uh, you can note down the certificates required so you require a mark sheet of ssc examination you require a mark sheet of hsc examination you require a cet score or jwe score you require a college or school leaving certificate cap registration is must even if you are applying for the institute quota so cap registration later cap allotment later if you have already been allotted a seat in the cap then that later is required photocopy of your aadhar card is required certificate of indian nationality is required birth certificate of candidate showing his place of birth in the state of maharashtra is also required right then depending on your caste if you are opting for the category sc and t etc then caste certificate is required then along with that obviously caste or tribe validity certificate is required if you are opting for an obc kind of Uh, category then non criminal certificate if you don't have a non criminal certificate then the receipt of submission of application made for the non criminal and that certificate is issued by the sub divisional officer or a deputy collector of the district in addition to the validity certificate is required if a candidate is coming with the gap in the uh, cet examination or hsc examination then gap certificate is required if you are qualifying examination is outside maharashtra is not from the maharashtra then migration certificate is required for example cbse students etc right and then depending on the category type b type c type d or type e you will also require few pro formas which are given uh, in the cet brochure so you can read the brochure which has been given by the cet cell it is all these pro formas are available depending on your type you will have to submit those pro formas however primarily you require the mark sheets ssc hsc score cards school leaving certificate cap registration aadhar card nationality certificate and the birth certificate or domicile certificates these are must okay if you are opting for the minority seats uh, particularly in uh, father agnel college if you are opting for the minority seats then proof of the uh, christian or roman catholic minority status is also must so you your school leaving certificate which mentions the your minority status uh, or your father's or school leaving certificate of your father or brother or unmarried sister mentioning the religion religion or pro forma stating from the uh, uh, christian or romanic catholic along with the baptism certificate or a letter from the parish priest or bishop any one of this is okay it is required and also along with that you are you are domiciled in the state of maharashtra is must so these are the additional certificates required for the minority seats now let me talk about the how how many seats are available what is the seat share so this is detail in detail it is already given in the ms cet brochure so you need to identify that you are applying to which college are you applying to government government aided are you applying to autonomous non autonomous are you applying to the ict or uh, institute at lonere so depending on that you will have the different seat share i will particularly talk about the father agnel college since it is an unaided minority educational institution how the seat share is so there will be 20% institutional quota available at father agnel college 
out of number of seats available out of sanction seats available 20% will the will be the institutional quota remember that there is no nri quota okay then 80% are the cap seats out of 80% cap seats there will be a 51% uh, minority seats then the out of remaining seats there will be a 15% seats allocated to the all india and then through the remaining seats 70% seats will go to the maharashtra state candidate of the home university that means mumbai university and 30% seats of the maharashtra candidate to outside home university outside home university means for example pune university amravati university or uh, any other university in the state of maharashtra so this is the categorization of the seats uh, remember that cap seats are filled by the seat itself itself why institutional quota 20% seats will be filled by the college father agnel college so we are going to fill the 20% seats so let me talk again about these seats now come down directly to the seats at the college so as i told you uh, father agnel college is a self financed institution approved by iict permanently affiliated to the university of mumbai degree given by the university of mumbai minority institution b degree with the honors minus option available all reservations may be a female reservations or category reservations or the defense personal reservation will be as per the government of india rules and they are being allocated to the cap rounds reservations will be available only in the cap round i am repeating this statement all reservations are available in the cap round there are no agents for doing the admissions no nri quota you will have to come to college for taking the admission or apply to the cap rounds this is very important slide please pay attention to this slide i am repeating this sentence it is compulsory to register in the cap and you will have to do verification of your documents at the fc center even if you want to take an admission through institute quota or if any vacancies arises after the cap again i am repeating the statement if you want to take an admission through the institute quota at father agnel college or the vacancies remaining after cap round after that if you want to take an admission then also you need to register to the cap center you need to do a registration on the ct cell website it is compulsory to register on the ct cell website this slide also shows you the number of seats available in different branches at our college in computer engineering the choice code is mentioned here it is 3184 which is an institute code and then 24510 total seats are 120 out of that 24 seats are at the institutional round while 96 seats will be filled through the cap round aids we have 60 in tech therefore 12 seats are available for the institution round ecs also 12 seats are available mechanical also 12 seats are available so at an institutional level we have total 60 seats available to be filled all these seats will be filled at the college round while the cap seats which are 240 seats will be filled by the ct cell if any vacancy arises after the cap round <coughs> out of this 240 seats then those will be filled in the further rounds which will be organized by the college itself If you want to know the detailed seat matrix, then please refer CET cell portal for the detailed seat matrix. Okay, so I'll go to the next. Please take a snapshot of this slide. It is very important. Now I am announcing the different dates of the admission process, which will be carried out at our college, at Father Agnel College. You will have to fill the institute level form. which is available on the college website form fees is 1500 rupees institute level form filling is already open you can go to website and fill the admission form remember that simply filling is not enough you will have to fill the form pay the fees and submit it, submit the form you will have to submit the form i have seen in the database that there are candidates who have filled the form but and paid the fees but they have not submitted the form yet please submit the form or there are candidates who have submitted who have actually filled the form but they have not paid the fees and they have not submitted i request them to pay the fees and submit the form please submit the form go till the last step now when are we going to close this form filling 
date is on the screen it is on the 12th october at 4 pm sharp we are going to close this link of form filling on 12th october at 4 pm sharp so before that all those candidates who wants admission at the college through an institution quota or cap vacancy should fill the form now when are we going to declare the merit list so provisional merit list will be declared on 13th of october at 10 am on the college website on 13th of october at 10 am you will get on college website the provisional merit list then your grievances if at all are there if you feel that uh, there is any change in the in the merit list then please let us know by email or come to the college in person on 13th itself up to 12 noon only so uh, once we declare the provisional merit list after that if you have any grievance so please let us know by 12 noon final merit list will be declaring again on the college website at 4 pm on the same date 13th of october so on 13th of october institutional merit list will be declared on the college website then we will have a round institutional round 1 allotment round 1 it will be on the 14th october that means the next day 14th october it will be offline round will be in the college schedule for this will be put up on the website along with the merit list so when you see the merit list please also see the schedule for the web schedule of the round on the website so we will be calling candidate based on the their merit list so there will be schedule for the reporting Uh, so time slots will be given you need to remain present in those time slots so according to your time slots you should come for the institutional round 1 on 14th october subsequent rounds will also be there based on the vacancies so if there is a vacancy arises there will be subsequent rounds and those will be announced the later remember that right now i have told you that the dates are 12th 13th and 14th october however if schedule is postponed or shifted by the ct cell itself then we may need to shift these rounds also so for all those updates please frequently visit the crc website please go on visiting the websites but as of now our dates are like this okay so please note down these dates i am repeating our forms are open we will close on the 12th october at 4 pm provisional merit list will declare on the 13th october at 10 am if any problem is there please report up to 12 noon final merit list will be put up on the website on 13th october at 4 pm and we will have round on 14th october in the college now let me go ahead so how the merit numbers will be assigned how the merit list is prepared it is already declared in the cet brochure but for sake of brief understanding same process highest the merit will be based on the mathematics in this at cet examination then the next physics at cet examination then next chemistry at cet examination or any other course in the uh, other than chemistry at cet examination then if there is a tie then higher percentage of marks at the board examination will be seen for the qualifying examination in physics chemistry mathematics taken together that means pcm of hsc will be taken then again there is a tie then highest uh hsc marks in the mathematics then hsc marks in the physics and finally aggregate marks in the hsc so this is how the tie breaker is going to be solved so tie breakers will be like this mathematics in cet physics in cet chemistry in cet then pcm at the hsc board examination then mathematics at the hsc board examination physics at the hsc board examination and finally aggregate at hsc board examination this is how the merit list will be prepared and it is the same as ct cell has declared now few questions which you ask and i am directly putting the answers people ask is it mandatory to submit all the required documents in original so answer is yes if you want an admission at father agnel college you will have to submit during the round your original documents if you have already taken admission somewhere else no problem then you need to submit the retention letter to our college that you have submitted your your uh originals at some other college you need to submit that retention letter over here briefly original documents are must or retention letter is must another question comes is the candidates present is compulsory while taking admission answer is yes 
because we are giving admission to the candidate we give admission to the candidate and not to anyone else and therefore candidate is must for the taking the admission now the next question comes that it is about the vacancies after the cap round if any one of you does not get admission in the institution round obviously you will have to wait, wait for the further rounds so you the first question is how uh, do we need to reapply so answer is no you need not reapply for the cap vacancies once you have applied to the college by filling the admission form by filling the uh, by paying the fees verifying the documents then your same application form is valid till the cut off date you need not separately apply for the cap vacancies however for institutional level quota definitely you will have to apply right so you will have to apply at the cap cell cd cell and also you will have to apply at the institutional cell but that application is a single application only once you have to apply you need not apply again and again okay and this seats after the cap round are also filled based on the inter say merit okay so whatever uh, seats are earmarked by the seat itself they will be filled based on that and based on the inter say merit many times this question has been asked what is the last year's cut off so it is available on the website you can refer the cut off on the website but just for your answering your question i have shown here the uh, cut off in the different branches computer ecs mechanical and aids which was for the last year but if you ask me as a principal uh, i would say that uh, don't blindly go beyond the cut off because let us say if there is a vacancy that arises on the last date of cut off last date last moment and if there is no candidate available and if we simply give based on the minimum seat score that uh, that particular candidate gets an admission so that that, that doesn't mean that the, uh, this is the minimum cut off that candidate was lucky enough to get an admission right so it is okay to know the cut off but still participate in the rounds continuously till you get an admission now how is the round process you may be having the next question now in your mind how exactly the round happens so let me answer that uh, i'll simply read it this round will be an open counseling round it will be an offline with the seat allotment done as per the inter say merit during the round itself based on the available vacancies so you will come to know what are the vacancies available during the counseling and if you are in the merit you will get that seat you are required to remain present for the entire duration of the round only candidates who are present during the round will be considered for the final allotment seat so if you are not available during the round and if your number comes then obviously it will be all of seat will be offered to the next candidate so you need to remain present during the round <coughs> then upon successful completion of the seat allotment once you get a seat then upon completion of this allotment your confirmation will only be done if there is a fee transaction from your bank confirmation of fee transaction should be given by the bank or you should be able to produce the fee receipt or and the certificate of retention letter that means you will seat will be confirmed if and only if you are able to produce the fee receipt that you have paid the fees and also the original certificates or at least the retention letter okay without fee receipt and without the certificate retention letter your admission is not confirmed at the college okay so number one you need there should be a vacancy if there is a vacancy you will come to know then based on your merit seat will be offered to you once seat is offered if you want an admission in, on that seat then you need to pay the fees and show the fee receipt and show the give the certificates or the retention letter once this is done then your admission is confirmed at the college this is how the institutional round will operate now few questions already faq has been available on the website i will not answer each and every question but a few questions right what is the fees etc etc uh, all these are available what is the nearest bank available to the college is the educational loan available to the college is the net banking facility available all these please visit the website we have put up answers to all these standard questions but obviously you will have the questions like how much is the fees now right so again these details are available on the institutional website 
So I will just briefly tell you that if you are taking an admission in the cap round for this year, the admission fee is one lakh sixty-seven thousand four hundred and fifty-four rupees, right? So the fees applicable to tuition fee waiver schemes will obviously be different. So, but as such, whether you are participating in an institutional round or a cap round, your fees is one lakh sixty-seven thousand four hundred and fifty-four rupees available. So tuition fees, development fees, and all other university fees. However, if there is a revision in the university fees, the fees that has been offered by the university, if there is a minor revision in that, obviously this amount is also uh, slightly changed. Okay. Then if you are from the reserved category and coming to the cap, then there is a different uh, fees that has been offered, and it is available on the screen to see, because uh, those reimbursements, free shifts will be given by the government of. Uh, Uh, maharashtra so those will be applicable to you if a candidate is from a j and k then there is a different fee structure and it is also available on the institute website i request you to see the fee structure if you are from j if you are applying through a j and k quota and this structure is shown on the web uh, in the slide also and you can visit on the institution website it is given there okay now how to pay the fees this will be the next question how are you going to pay the fees let me read it for you remember that you will not be offered the seat during the round unless the full fees is paid and the valid proof of payment transaction is shown during the admission round you can pay the fees to demand draft drawn in favor of father consecure rodriguez college of engineering payable at mumbai or you can also pay the fees through an online mode you can use a credit card debit card net banking or upi any of these facilities you can use a payment gateway there are different ways of uh, making the payment gateways also a, one caution ensure that you have a sufficient transaction limit in your card if you are using a credit card or a debit card please check the limit of transaction of your credit card or the debit card uh, before using the credit card or the debit card online payment links are already available visit the college website and you will find the online payment link or i have mentioned here direct url you can take the snapshot of the screen please use this direct url link and you will be able to do the payment if you are using net banking if at all you are using net banking or mobile banking then available options for imps neft or rtgs are as shown on the screen so institute name bank name branch code address everything is shown over here you can use this in short you can use demand draft or any online payment mode you will be able to do the payment during the round itself but remember if you are using card then make sure that transaction limit is there and if you are using online net banking then please add the beneficiary well in advance if you know that you are going to apply to our college you are going to use net banking option then i would recommend right now itself you should add the beneficiary because by adding the beneficiary takes time okay so add the beneficiary and keep it ready now other general questions few general questions uh, do you have the hostel it is only for the jnk candidates we have a limited seats only for the jnk candidates other uh, safety security library etc i have already explained you still you can visit the websites you will get the answers for them when the college will start it is already ct cell has announced that it is it will start in the month of october uh, uh, and uh, you, you can see those dates right october november it will start in the november what are the college timings 8:30 to 4:30 are the college timings so all these all these questions answers are available on the website one popular question is is it possible to change the branch after second year technically yes you can but as a principal i would recommend that don't consider this option as of now okay don't take an admission in a particular branch because you can change the branch in second year but technically it is possible to change now my final slide is whom should i contact so visit the website my recommendation is always keep on visiting the website Uh, for any updates frequently visit the website there are email ids etc given you can contact to all the people finally i would simply say that visit the college experience the joy of learning and my message to all of you is that remember you are not selecting simply the college right 
you are selecting your friends so friends at the end it is important that when you are selecting the college you are not selecting the branch you are not simply selecting the particular college or your discipline you are actually selecting your future friends the friends which will remain throughout your career or throughout your life so make a cautious decision of selecting a college i am thankful to all the candidates and their parents for joining this link i am thankful to all our teachers who have joined this link i am thankful to the entire admission team for making this webinar visible all head of the departments teaching non teaching staffs everyone who has joined please remain connected we will take your questions our moderator will take your questions through the chat box and then we will answer over here please put your questions in the chat box if you have any questions and uh, we will answer those questions so i will come out of this screen and uh, yeah now sir, yeah sir we have i hand over uh, to heman sir yes thank you very much sir for wonderful uh, session It was really indeed very informative uh now any questions are there i think students will put it up on the chat box yeah so sir the the first question is uh, is there any additional fees to be paid for the particular institutional level rounds institutional level round whatever uh, fees is there the fees is same you can contact our registrar for this payment details sir, sir sir the the next question is uh, how much is the particular reservation for the obc category category obc category institutional level there is no reservation there is no reservation in institutional level it is only in the cap rounds okay reservation is available only in the cap rounds seat itself i remember that uh, once once cap round seats are filled and if there are vacancies that arises after the cap rounds and those vacancies are operated at the college you will lose the benefits of payment of the uh, payment benefits of obc category all the seats which are filled at the institutional level whether it's through an institution quota or non cap quota they will have uh, to fee they will have to pay the fees entire fees at the college i hope okay. this is that is okay. clear yeah okay so sir obc category if you take an admission it will be only through ct cell so the the sir, next uh, question is can a student authorize a particular representative to attend the counseling process on behalf of him or her so i i believe i was only talking for one hour so i i i want others to speak now so shetty ji you can come forward i can answer but it is better to give a chance to others you can sir actually unmute him being yeah. the host please unmute you can sir do it being the host Okay. sir the sir uh, in the meantime the next question is can i apply for the institutional quota through my je main marks sir uh, yes yeah i yes cdcl yeah. as well as je you can yeah. apply but the uh, merit will vary the preference will be given to the cdcl candidates sir next is uh, uh what if the 10th mark sheet has been misplaced but we have the soft copy so will that do <laughs> original mark sheet is required required yes sir so the so the next question is are type b candidates eligible for the college level quota so the uh, so the question is are type b candidates eligible for the college level quota uh college level quota all kind all types of candidates uh, are eligible okay sir uh, so, uh, so the the next question except is uh, NRI quota, we... except nri quota yeah. all types of candidates are eligible 
okay so the next question is uh, do we have to pay 100% fees at the actual time of admissions yes yeah yes without that uh, your admission is not confirmed you'll have to pay okay. 100% fees sir there is a question uh, when can we visit the college so just uh, so just i would like to answer most it. welcome yes, any time yes. most welcome aha uh -huh, but after 4 to 4 pm 9 am to 4 pm 9 am to 4 pm sir the, ne the next question is uh, the college level form is available online or offline Sir, Jain, sir, if you can answer, you answer na directly. You know, okay, na? okay, okay, sir, okay, sir, sure, sir. Yeah, the uh, the college level forms are uh, directly available online. So if you just uh, scroll on the top, so the entire links have been put up there. So the next question, I'll be uh, addressing it to you or to Shetty, sir. Uh, if I uh, the candidate says, if I apply for a tuition fee waiver scheme (TFWS) category, can I apply as an open category student as well? In case I don't get uh, admission in the tuition fee waiver scheme category. Shetty, Shetty sir, ka ye aani hai, just a minute. Sir, you can just uh, type his name and then unmute him. Yeah, sir, I've just uh, sent a request to unmute. Yeah, to uh, to Kirtan, whose question is what courses are available at Vashi and Bandra Colleges? Well, Kirtan, uh, we, have, we, uh, we have already given you the website. So on the website, uh, you can have a list of all the different courses available there. Uh, the... Next question is, uh, if I'm waiting for the cap allotment form, should I still fill